Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're going to be discussing a character build. On this channel, we've done a lot of analysis of different classes and subclasses and different information about the game and the mechanics, but today we're going to be talking about one very specific build. For many, when they first start playing D&D, they know how to roll dice, and they know how to attack, and they know how to take long rests, but that doesn't mean that they really understand what is under the surface. It turns out D&D is a game of math. D&D is a game that involves understanding how your character is built, how to work with them when it comes to their resources, their attacks, the damage they can do, as well as their defense, their armor class, their health, and understanding just how much damage they can take. Today we're going to be discussing one of the most beginner-friendly classes in the game, the Barbarian. I'm going to be going through a Barbarian that I have built. I have the character sheet in front of me here. We're going to be discussing this Barbarian from the beginning of the game, level 1, all the way up to level 5. This is the first tier of play, so this is what most beginners will start the game playing. And we'll be going through at a couple different points and looking at how this character works. But level 1 is the biggest point in any character's career because it's when you have to make all the decisions about them. We're going to start off by talking about this character's ancestry, or as 5e calls it, their race. One of the best races for barbarians, or for any defensive tank builds in general, is the Goliath. You'll find the Goliath in uh, Mordenkainen's Monsters of the Multiverse, and I believe that in the series Critical Role, the most famous barbarian in modern D&D was in fact a Goliath. They are humanoids, uh, seven or eight feet tall, and uh, mountain-born. These creatures have a couple different uh, pieces to them. First of all, they are considered little giants, meaning that they count as large-sized creatures when it comes to their ability to carry, push, pull, and lift. So they're still medium-sized creatures for the purposes of game mechanics, but for those specific strength-based mechanics, they count as a size larger. They also are mountain-born, which means that they can survive high altitudes and are resistant to cold damage, which is a nice little buff. And they have something that's known as Stone's Endurance. What this means is, is that a couple times per day, when they take damage, they can roll a d12 and add their constitution modifier to it, and reduce the da incoming damage by that much. A d12 averages to about six and a half, so we'll call that seven. And uh, this character's constitution modifier is going to be three, so that means a couple times per day you can reduce the incoming damage by ten. However, um, according to the rules in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the plus one, plus two skill bonus can be assigned to any stat you want. And since we're building a Barbarian, let's talk about these stats. The point buy method states that you have 27 points and that you can buy different stats. I have decided that with this character, I'm going to be buying my stats. I'm going to put a 15 in my strength, and I'm going to take one of my... Uh, Goliath stat boosts, the plus one, and put it there. So that's a 16 in strength. Then I'm going to buy a 12 in dexterity. I'm going to buy a 14 in constitution and put my Goliath plus two in that stat. So that also becomes a 16. Then I'm going to leave intelligence and wisdom both at 10. And that leaves me with a single 11 left that I can buy. So I'm going to throw that in charisma. Now, after you've chosen these stats, you also get to choose a background. For this one, I've decided to go with the Player's Handbook background of Entertainer. 
Although, specifically, there's a variant to this, and that is the gladiator. This gives you a feature known as by popular demand. And what it means is, is that if you're in a location where your entertaining feats, such as your gladiatorial features, are well known, people will actually treat you better. You'll have a better chance of uh, getting favors from the locals, or finding discounts in shops or in places to stay. It's mostly for role-playing, but it is quite handy. Um, this also gives you a couple extra proficiencies, which we'll go over in a moment. Now, I chose the Barbarian to build here. So, the Barbarian at level 1 gets two features. First of all, they get their Rage. Rage is the thing that they're most famous for. They can rage a number of times per day equal to their proficiency modifier, so that would be twice at this point. And they get those uses back on a, on a long rest. When they rage, they stay raged for a minute, and they remain raged as long as they deal damage or take damage from other creatures. This rage allows them to have advantage on their strength checks and on their strength-based saving throws, deal a little bit of extra damage, currently it's an extra plus two to their damage, as well as take half damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing weapons, which for a good portion of the game is the majority of the damage you'll take. So for this, for the all intents and purposes, barbarians take half damage when they're fighting, as long as they remember to rage. The other thing barbarians get at level one is unarmored defense. This allows them to calculate their defense differently than most people. See, most people, your defense, your AC, is 10 plus your dex modifier. If you put armor on, that changes that. For barbarians, as long as they're not wearing armor, their unarmored defense is 10 plus their dex modifier plus their constitution modifier. So it actually behooves them not to wear armor. They can still get this benefit while wearing a shield, which is really nice. Now, as far as the saving throws and skill proficiencies, um, they get proficiency in strength and constitution saving throws, which is great. Then they also get uh, a couple extra skills. They get proficiency in skills because of their background and because of their class. I have chosen the skill proficiencies acrobatics, which nets them a plus three because of their proficiency bonus. There's then athletics, which nets them a plus five. Intimidation, uh, which is just proficiency plus two because it turns out that your charisma bonus is zero. Then there's perception, also a two because your wisdom is zero. And performance, which comes from your background. Uh, that one also is a plus two. So those are your skills. You're not the best skill-wise. Health-wise, you get a d12 hit die, which is maxed at character creation, so 12, plus your constitution modifier, that's 3, so you start with 15 hit points. And because your dex modifier is a plus 1, and your constitution modifier is a plus 3, your armor class starts out at 14. Now, you also get some equipment. You get an explorer's pack, which I've chosen here. And then you get a bunch of weapons. You can have um, a martial weapon of your choice, and then a simple weapon of your choice, and then you get some javelins. I have chosen a great sword, which is a two-handed weapon, as well as hand axes, which are for throwing or dual wielding, because they're light weapons, and javelins, which are also a throwing weapon. So this is our barbarian. We have built them to be strong, to be tanky. So at level one, what would combat look like for a barbarian? Well, rage is activated as a bonus action, so on your turn in combat, you're going to activate your rage, run towards the nearest enemy, and you're gonna hit them with your greatsword, because that's the strongest weapon you've got. Um, I've done some math here for both your ability to survive and your ability to kill. 
as a barbarian. The way the math works out is that because you're proficient with all martial weapons, you get a plus six, a plus five rather, to attack with your greatsword, plus two for your proficiency bonus, and a plus three from your strength. What this means is, is that against a CR one quarter enemy, you're going to hit them approximately 65% of the time. So you're gonna hit two thirds of the time, the damage you're going to do with this greatsword while you're raging is 2d6 plus 3 for your strength plus 2 for your rage. 2d6 averages to 7, so it's 7 plus 3 plus 2, that's 12 damage. Against a CR 1 quarter enemy, you would kill them in approximately 4 rounds if you were the only one attacking them. There's also uh, some math I've done here for CR 1 enemies. Their armor class is approximately the same, so you're looking at, a, again, a 65% chance to hit and 12 damage, but their hit point pool is a little bigger, so you would kill that enemy in about 7 rounds. Now keep in mind that these numbers are assuming that you are fighting the enemy alone, and that your allies aren't backing you up for some reason, so you should be killing them much faster than this, but this is assuming you are fighting one-on-one. -on -one. What about defense, though? You've got 14 armor class and 15 hit points and rage. A CR one quarter enemy would hit you about 45% of the time, so they're missing more often than not. They would do an average of three damage against you every turn um, because your rage cuts that in half, meaning it would take you five rounds to be killed in a one-on-one -on -one fight, meaning that you would kill them faster than they'd kill you. But against a CR one enemy, uh, they would also hit you about 45% of the time, but they would do twice as much damage, about six every round, meaning it would only take them three rounds to kill you, but that's assuming they hit every time, so you could probably double that number. The point is, is that you are surviving for many, many rounds of getting hit in the face and killing creatures in just a few rounds on your own. So you're doing okay. Now, next time you level up, a couple things are going to happen. First of all, your hit point maximum is going to go up by an average of 7 plus your con mod, because a d12 averages to 6.5, we round that up to 7, and then your constitution modifier is 3, so you, now your hit points are 25. And then you get another couple uh, features. You get reckless attack. Reckless attack means that at the beginning of your turn, you can choose to attack with advantage. Advantage means you roll your die twice. You roll your d20 twice. And you take the higher number. Mathematically speaking, that is the equivalent of a plus 5. Because of the way d20s work. So that just, when it comes to crunching numbers, that just means you're going to get a plus 5 to your uh, hit opportunity. And then, um, when you choose to reckless attack, all your enemies will also attack you with advantage, so they also get that plus five to their hit chance. Risk versus reward. This is the way of the barbarian. You also get danger sense, which means you have advantage on your dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see and hear, such as traps and spells and whatnot, so that's a cool feature to get. But then at level three, we're going to get quite a boost. At level three, we're going to choose our subclass. And for this build, I've chosen the Zealot Barbarian. The Zealot is found in Xanathar's Guide to Everything and is actually one of the simplest barbarians out there when it comes to their features, at least at low levels. First, you get Divine Fury. What this means is, is that when you attack, you get to add extra damage to your attacks as your Divine Fury gets to add. It is 1d6 plus half your Barbarian level. At this point, your level is 3, so that's 1.5, and, and a d6 averages to 3.5, so that's 5 extra damage that you're getting on your attacks. You also get Warrior of the Gods, which is an interesting feature that just states that um, if you're killed and a spell that would resurrect you would cost material components, it doesn't anymore. So if the cleric is going to cast Revivify to bring you back after you die in combat, 
Normally it would cost a 300 gold piece diamond. Now it doesn't. So you're very easy to resurrect, and uh, that's just really nice for your party. So now we're at level 3. Now the difficulty of the game has been raised a little bit. Our stats haven't changed, our proficiency bonus hasn't changed. All that's happening now is that when we go into combat, we're going to still rage as our bonus attack, and then we're going to reckless attack with our greatsword. But the creatures we're fighting have gotten a little stronger. So I've done the math here for a CR1 creature and a CR3 creature. Against a CR1 creature, your hit chance with reckless attack is actually going to be 85%, so you're going to be hitting most of the time. And because of the extra damage that you're getting from uh, Divine Fury, uh, you're actually going to be doing an average of 17 damage. That means that if you hit every round, you will kill a CR1 creature in about five rounds on your own. Against a CR3 creature, though, uh, oddly enough, their AC doesn't average out to any higher, so you're still hitting 85% of the time, doing 17 damage, and you're killing them in approximately seven rounds of hitting them. So they've just got a bigger hit point pool. But they do hit quite a bit harder. When we're talking about defense, remember you're reckless attacking now, so your enemies are attacking with advantage. They're gonna... a CR1 creature will hit you 75% of the time. They will only do an average of 6 damage, again, your rage is blocking half of that, and with your pool of 35 hit points at this point, you will last for 6 rounds of being hit. But against a CR3 creature, uh, you will get hit 80% of the time, they will do an average of 12 damage against you, meaning you will only last for three rounds of getting hit. So if you're going to try and tank a boss at uh, level three, really make sure you have some backup. So yeah, at level three we have gotten all this extra damage, but the enemies have gotten stronger. So what happens next? Level four comes along, and we have a choice to make. We can either take an ability score increase, and we could bump our strength to 18, our constitution to 18, we could round off our charisma to 12, <clears throat> or we can take a feature, or a feat. Feats are found in the player's handbook as well as several other books, and they're special powers that give your character features like class or subclass features, but you just get to choose one. And for this build, I'm going to choose the feat Great Weapon Master. Great Weapon Master states that if you crit against an enemy, you get to immediately make another attack as a bonus action. That's cool, but you've already used your bonus action to rage, so this won't work on round one. Maybe it'll work on rounds after that. So if you crit, you get to attack again. I haven't worked this into my math, but it's cool to know. What I have worked into my math is the Great Weapon Master attack penalty. If you choose to take a minus five to your attacks, we're talking, you know, hitting with your greatsword, you choose to take a minus five, that means that if you hit, you will hit with an extra 10 damage. This is one of the easiest ways to boost the damage you're going to do when you attack. And since you're a barbarian, you're already getting a plus five to hit. Mathematically speaking, because you reckless attack. So reckless attack mixed with great weapon master is just beautiful mathematically because they cancel out. So you're still rolling with advantage and taking the minus five, and that equals out to getting the same attack bonus as you were getting anyway. So... You should usually use Great Weapon Master. The only time you wouldn't use it against is very high armor classes, but for the sake of crunching numbers, I'm assuming you're using it all the time. Now at level 5, this is the end of our character creation today, you get fast movement, which means you get a plus 10 to your speed, so now your speed is 40 instead of 30, so you're faster. But also you get extra attack. When you take the attack action, you attack twice, with no need to use any sort of extra bonus action or anything like that. So, now, when we're in combat, 
Oh, we also have gotten our health up each level, so now our health is at 55. And at level 5, we also get a plus 1 to our proficiency bonus. It's now plus 3. So that means our attack bonus is plus 6. And, um, yeah, so, and our, we are, we are absolutely buffing ourselves up at this point. When in combat, what I'm going to assume is that we are raging with our bonus action on round one, running in, and reckless attacking with extra attack, and applying Great Weapon Master to both attacks. So, I've done the math here. And I've done it for a CR2 creature and a CR5 creature. Against a CR2 creature, we would hit approximately 70% of the time. So we're still hitting most of the time. The average damage we're going to do with both attacks, assuming both hit, is 2d6 for the greatsword, plus 3 for our strength, plus 2 for our rage, plus 6 for our divine fury that's going up, because our level's going up, plus 10 for Great Weapon Master. And then you double that because you've got extra attack. This means you will be doing an average damage, if you hit both times, of 56 hit points. Against a CR2 enemy, that means you will kill them in two rounds, or in two hits. I'm not assuming you're going to hit with every single attack, but you'll kill them uh, in two rounds. And then against the CR5 enemy, you'll be hitting them about 60% of the time, doing an average of 56 damage per round, and you'll kill them in approximately five rounds. Oh, sorry. Three rounds. My bad. <laughs> Can't read my own writing. So yeah, two rounds for a CR2 enemy, three rounds for a CR5 enemy. We are hitting like a truck. And with a 60% chance to hit rate, that's, that's not bad odds. Now, as far as defense goes, against a CR2 enemy, we would be getting hit about 75% of the time, thanks to Reckless Attack. Uh, but they're only going to be doing an average of 9 damage, thanks to our Rage. And that means that we will go down in about 7 rounds, assuming that we get hit every round. Against a CR5 enemy, on the other hand, we will be getting hit 85% of the time, They'll be doing an average of 18 damage against us, thanks to Rage, and that means we'll go down in four rounds. Ironically enough, this means that in a one-on-one -on -one fight, whether or not a CR5 creature can take us down or not truly depends on the hit chance. I said we could kill a CR5 enemy in three rounds, assuming we hit all the time, but we only have a 60% chance to hit. On the flip side, a CR5 creature is going to hit us 85% of the time, but it will take four rounds to kill us. So the numbers are very... Eh, maybe, maybe not. But again, these are in a vacuum. This, These math I've done doesn't take any sort of party dynamics or strategy into effect. This is just run in, rage, and hit, hit, hit. Which, to be fair, barbarians do most of the time. So this is my recommended way of building a Barbarian. This is how I'd recommend a brand new player try their first ever Barbarian. There are other options out there. There's tankier builds, there's builds with taunts, there's builds with built-in bonus attacks, even ones with a little bit of weird magical effects. But the Zealot Barbarian is simple, hits hard, takes damage like a champ, and if they do happen to go down, they're real easy to bring back. The Barbarian is simple and fun, and I recommend anyone who's not played D&D before, start here. You'll probably have a good time. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below, and keep your eyes peeled for more character builds coming down the line soon. Have a good one, my friends.